Hi, I'm Sherman Chan from Aspen. I want to have a conversation with you today about the modeling of wind, solar, battery, and all these new devices. And it's more of a conversation about our experience with how to model these devices. And, but I also I just want to give you, uh, help you make informed decision about which of these models you should use in, in Aspen One Line, in particular in version 15. So let me begin by telling you something that's uh, happened in about 2010, about 12 years ago. And at that time, uh, many wind plants were being built. Most of them were made by GE and they what we call type three wind turbines. And from a report that I read in the, that was published by the IEEE Power System Relaying Committee uh, called a fault contribution from wind farms. I learned that the uh, current from these uh, plants is limited to 1.5 times the photo current, um, not very high. Uh, and there's no zero sequence uh, fault currents. Um, and that was the extent of it. <laughs> we didn't know very much of anything at all about how, is, how it works or, or how come it's limited to 1.5 times the photo current. Apparently that has something to do with the German grid code. But that what we know very little about it. So when users uh, ask us to model these machines, we built the current limited current source, that's what we call it, on top of the synchronous machine model. And we do that by limiting the maximum phase current, which is a parameter set by the user. So for a three phase fault, uh, we just simply limit the current by manipulating the voltage source behind the impedance. But for an unbalanced fault, and when we were getting both positive and negative sequence uh, currents, we had to sometimes deal with the negative sequence. And, and we do that the same way we do that with positive sequence source. But in this case, we actually have to add a voltage source in the negative sequence because there isn't um, one there to begin with. So by doing these two tricks, uh, we were able to limit the, um, the phase current to no more than the maximum current limit. Okay, then fast forward to 2016, Two utilities asked us to model the terminals of a voltage source converter. That's what VSC stands for, DC line in one liner. Um, so when they asked me, well, I told them I know nothing about VSC converters. So the utilities connected uh, us uh, at Aspen with an engineer in ABB office in Austria and who teaches and he teaches how, how to do it. Well, he suggested we model each terminal of the DC line as a perfect current source. And he gave us a table, which consists of uh, several columns. So one of the columns is the different voltage magnitudes. And the second column is the current magnitude. And the third one was power factor angle. And they actually, I, we got two tables, one for the Convert, uh, one for the rectifier and the other for the uh, inverter. And from that, at Aspen, we developed the voltage control current source model in one liner. Now, at that time, we had no clue that these VSC converters had anything to do with wind or solar generation. And, but we succeeded in, uh, in, in building this model anyway and made those uh, utilities happy. Okay, then in about a year later in 2017, the IEEE Power System Relaying Committee convened a working group called C24 to explore a method for simulating solar, wind, and battery systems in commercial short circuit programs. Uh, this uh, submit uh, uh, C24, we had 
all the uh, uh, large commercial short circuit program vendors. And EPRI was represented by Dr. Evangelos Ferrantatis. And by that time, EPRI has already done extensive research in the modeling of these devices. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. Also, I didn't list here, but also the uh, manufacturers of uh, uh, converters and wind turbines and uh, solar farm devices, and they were all represented in this working group. And one of the first things I learned from this working group was that all the converter interface devices are built using VSC technology. Well, in addition, <laughs> the Type 3 wind plant uh, actually has a back-to-back uh, VSC converters. So, so actually, both for wind and solar, uh, the modern devices are all built using VSC technology. But at, since that time, we already at Aspen built the, v, the voltage control current source model. So it's a natural extension that we simply took uh, EPRI's control logic and populated the, uh, the table in VCCS and see if it works. Well, uh, and, and indeed it did. And so we were very pleased. <laughs> and also we were able to benchmark the output of our uh, voltage control current source model against the EPRI's result in, um, I think it's an eight bus sample network. And they were just, uh, you know, very, very, very close to the third and fourth digit in many cases. Now that was one confirmation of why EPRI's control strategies work. Well, by control, I mean the control of the converter output as a function of voltage. Now, we heard from two big vendors of converters when we were start call, co calling them and asking them to give us, uh, sending us details about how the converters work. Um, of the more than 10 vendors that we contacted, only two actually wrote back to us. And one was Siemens and the other one is called SMA. But these two are the world's, you know, some of the world's largest um, converter manufacturers. And we have looked at that information in detail and the working group decided that the EPRI control technology were in line with the detail provided by these people. Also at Aspen, we took uh, EPRI's control strategy and we took the output um, of that strategy, namely the power factor, the currents, etc. cetera. We were able to find the same, more or less the same numbers when we were trying to, when we uh, simulated with the voltage control current source. So, we're, so we are going to have confirmation from all these people that's, that seems like we were on the right track. So in about 2018, we sent out recommendations to uh, all the one-line users and urged them to, one, use the current limited generator model to model type three wind converters, and two, use the voltage control current source to model type four wind plant, solar plants, battery systems, and so on. So that was been our recommendation uh, since about three years ago. Now, in 2021, we have uh, developed two new models, uh, a new models for type three wind plant, which I'll tell you more about in, in the next slide or so, and also a new model for converter interface resources. And this, these two models are scheduled to appear in version 15 of one Aspen OneLiner. Okay, let me first, uh, before I describe to you how it works, but let me describe to you the uh, dialog box of the type three wind plant model. Now on the, on the left hand side is the, is the first dialog box that appears when you say new type three wind plant. And I have put some numbers in just, just for the fun of it. You notice that the first three items on the here are the number of units 
and unit MVA rating and unit rated megawatt. Okay, see all three of these numbers assess units because what we are trying very hard to do in version 15 is to ask you, the users, to aggregate these uh, devices as much as possible. And you may wonder, uh, what is the, why do I ask for the rated uh, megawatt? Well, it turns out the rated megawatt, which is here shown as 2.2, and the slip at rated kilowatt on the advanced page, which I'll tell you how to get that in a minute, are used to calibrate the curve of torque versus slip of the turbine blaze. And to get the dialog box on the right, you press the advanced settings button. And when you do that, the program asks you these information. This one, first top one, says if the phase of voltage, if any one of the three phases, phase voltages goes above 1.2 per unit or lower than 0.05 per unit, the turbine is to be shut down. Okay, now you can change that to anything you want. And in, the, in this second group box, in the middle of the advanced dialog box, are the parameters of the synchronous machine. These are the numbers that you can get out of any textbook or tables, and there's nothing magic about it, but uh, most people probably can just use the default numbers, which is are the ones shown here, and, uh, and not have to worry about it. And finally, on the lower right corner of the advanced box, it says filter X. Now the filter refers to two filters that are in the type three wind plan. You say, well, why am I at, um, uh, specifying the filter parameter? Well, it turns out for type three wind plan, the filter is inside the machine within the, the return path from the, the grid terminal going back to the back-to-back -back converter. Now the filter is built to filter out the first and second harmonics of the switching frequency of the VSC converter, which is typically which are which typically between two to five kilohertz. So this is a fairly high frequency filter. It's not very big, and the combined first and second harmonics filter at the power frequency, either fifty or sixty hertz, is a capacitor. And, and this is the, what re represents it, okay? So th this other, now I also here, I put an arrow at the crowbar button. Now crowbarring is a phenomenon that when the, when a fault is very close to a type three wind plant and the, the plant in a transient state, I, I emphasize the word transient, and the uh, senses a current that's over about two to two and a half per unit, it would go into a state where it shuts down the electronics by shorting out all the uh, windings in, in the rotor, thus turning the type three machine into a good old fashioned induction machine. And this crowbar state could produce a very high current, which is controlled mostly by this parameter to the right call rotor leakage impedance. So a 0.2 leakage impedance would give you about a five per unit of uh, crowbar. Say, well, so, so this is the way for you to turn on the crowbar state without relying on the program to actually do it because this is not a phenomenon that you can duplicate with a short circuit program. Okay, so where do we get a wind plan model from? Well, this comes from research at EPRI and an EPRI funded research at Polytechnic Montreal. And this model is fairly elaborate. Uh, it includes the induction machines, the electric parameters. And two, it includes the logic and limiter of the back to back converter that feeds power back from the machine terminal to the rotor of the induction machine. Roughly about 30% of the power is fed back that way. And third, it, it accounts for the torque characteristics of the wind turbine blade or blaze as a function of the slip of the induction machine. Now I want to 
and at the bottom that um, that APRI has benchmarked this phaser based model against uh, results of time domain simulations. So this is um, something that APRI had worked on even before C24 uh, was, was there. Okay, the crowbar state, I already mentioned, so I won't uh, draw on it. Now, the reason that you, you have to model the crowbar state I put here is for substation design. And so you mark the crowbar button to, to make this happen. Okay, so let's move on to the dialog box of the what we call the converter interface resource model. So this uh, model is intended for type four wind plants or solar plants or battery systems. So, uh, so because in all three of these cases, 100% of the power from the, from the generating device or, or either generating or consuming, power consuming device in the case of battery, going through a converter uh, to the utility grid. 100% of the power has to go through the converter. So for, for wind turbines, uh, this, this is very useful because uh, this means that the, the wind turbine that's generating power can generate power at a wide range of frequencies because this back-to-back -back converter would convert it first to DC and then back to 60 or 50 Hertz. So there's no, um, no need for funny tricks like the type three that the uh, machines that I showed you earlier. Now, just to show you some of the parameters here, again, we put the number of units and unit MVA and unit generation in here. Again, the re whole reason is that we want you, the users, to aggregate whenever possible. And, and that will really help. And I, I will talk, I talk more about that uh, a little later on. Now, we discovered from talking to a lot of manufacturers and users of converters that some converter, definitely not all of them, uh, have a limit that when the voltage drops to a certain point, the, the maximum current changes. So what we provided in this little group box in the middle of the dialog box is that a way for you to specify that. And here I gave an example. It says, if the positive sequence voltage is above 0.5 per unit, well, the maximum current is 1.2, but if the voltage at the terminal is less than 0.5 per unit, uh, the reduce the current to one. Well, actually I have seen many cases that what they would actually reduce it to half or even uh, lower than that. Okay, so the control method uh, is not something you can choose here, but we use this word that's in the final report of the C24 working group. We refer to our method as a dynamic reactive current control. Now in version 15 of one-liner, you have the ability to, to pro ask the program to generate dynamic reactive current in both the positive sequence and in the negative sequence. So actually the, the one for a negative sequence is defaulted to zero because most of the machines aren't built that way yet. But it, it looks like it will happen very soon. And I will explain that in, in a minute. Uh, uh, and when and the bottom part about shutdown is this part is the same thing that we provided for the wind machines. Basically, you provide a high and a low range that the machines shouldn't either exceed or go below. So this is the uh, dialog box for the converter resource model. Well, you we say, well, how is this uh, any different from the voltage control current source? Well, actually, there aren't too many. If, if you assume that the negative sequence slope is zero, this model will essentially produce this uh, more or less the same output as the voltage control current source. Now, you probably wonder, well, if, if I simply replace a voltage control current source with one of these, will I actually get the same numbers? 
Well, the answer is no. <laughs> the, the reason is has to do with the current limit for the D axis and the Q axis, D being the direct axis and Q as the quadrature axis. In uh, version four, we assume that the limits on the D and Q axis were always one, even though the total current limit may be higher than one, say 1.2. But uh, why we did that? Well, that was, uh, uh, I'm sorry, to, but I have to blame EPRI for that. Um, well, I'm not blaming them, but that was their, their directives at the time. But more recently, uh, EPRI changes its uh, directive to make the, over, the total current, let's say 1.2 1. Uh, being the limit, to be identical to the quadrature and the direct axis limit. So, so that makes the output of the new um, model to be slightly different from the one that you get earlier. And it actually, this one will generate more reactive power and have more beneficial effects. You say, well, which one is this? Uh, the, the, my uh, machine have, or that the customer has? Well, you'll never know because when all these times of several years of when we talk to the manufacturers asking what these limits are, they wouldn't tell us. <laughs> so we, so EPRI is numbers, it, um, is, is the best numbers that we can get. Okay, so let's uh, first talk about the uh, new converter. Actually, not first, but I already talked about the, the type three wind model. So I'm gonna talk about the new Converter Interface Resource Model. And this model is intended for type four wind plant, solar plant and battery systems. Okay, so this is the, as I said, if you don't care about the negative sequence, this would, model would produce more or less the same numbers that the voltage control current sources will, uh, will output. Now the negative sequence reactive current is, is a big deal because uh, it was done uh, to conform to a, to a German grid code that requires it. You say, well, what does that have anything to do with us? That's in Germany. Well, it turns out that when whatever German does, and since most of the, a lot of the manufacturers or converters are there, and the, as well as consumers, uh, the uh, European countries as, as soon to follow. And also the relay manufacturers in the US as well as the relay um, setting engineers really applauded this, this uh, addition of the negative sequence reactive current because in so much of the network in this country, uh, negative sequence relays are used to detect uh, unbalanced faults. So by doing this, uh, they would mix, make people's life a lot simpler. And so, and the, so, so it, without the negative sequence, uh, I'm saying that the, this model is no different from the, uh, fundamentally from the voltage control current source. The only difference now is that you don't have to enter any current or power factor angle into a table. And, and some of you will probably say hallelujah to that. And, and one liner computes these values in, internally. So you don't have to enter them anymore. Now for both uh, the new models for type three wind plants and the voltage control, um, excuse me, the converter interface uh, resources, you must uh, choose a pre fall option of either start from network linear network solution or from power flow solution. You cannot use the assume flat pre fall voltage option anymore. And, uh, you know, for, for a very short time of less than a year, we let users of one liner, one version 14 to use the assume flat option to simulate the voltage control current source. That did not work out well at all. And, and that was, that's the reason why you cannot use this assume flat default voltage option. 
Okay, so let's talk about how you migrate with the existing model. Assume that you have you're already modeling these devices in your short circuit program. Uh, and let me start with win plans. Now remember our we've been telling people to model these win plans since uh, 2018 to to uh, use the current limited generator. Okay. If you're doing that, well, we want you to switch to the new type three wind plant model. If you are using type four wind plants, solar plants or battery system, and regardless of how you model these uh, devices now, we suggest that you change them to the new converter interface resource model in version 15. And I want to, uh, to <laughs> emphasize this idea of aggregating and so so let me say that one more time whenever possible aggregate the units in a farm or units that are within close proximity to each other whenever possible so that's why the new models in version 15 ask you to enter the number of units unit mva rating unit megawatt output and so on and aggregation will result in speedier convergence, faster simulation speed, and more realistic results. You say, well, what does that have to do with realistic results? Well, it so happens that if you have these units within close proximity of each other, they sometimes get into a, a bad habit of, of oscillating with each other. So this kind of numeric oscillation could uh, possibly lead to not so good results. So we, so there's many good reasons for you to aggregate these uh, units. Okay. So finally, um, is is the voltage control current source model good for anything anymore? <laughs> you might probably ask, because I haven't mentioned them at all. Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, the voltage control current source is still in version fifteen. But in the, uh, the new Appendix J in version 15's user's manual, we will show how you can use the voltage control current source to model one, statcoms, and two, uh, older solar plants that inject the same current regardless of the terminal voltage. Um, well, there are a lot of people that are already uh, modeling the statcom this way. And, and secondly, the, the, this old solar plant that I'm referring to actually exists and in, in some utilities, and I'm not making that up. So if you have any one of these, uh, do use the voltage control current source. And there may be other ones that people will, will think of. Basically, you want one, the device to uh, inject only positive sequence uh, current, and B, uh, you want these devices to not to be too complicated and because if they, they just don't, uh, this, this is not the right model to, if, for something that's very, very complicated. Okay, so finally, is the current limited generator uh, good for anything anymore? <laughs> the answer is no, <laughs> please don't use it anymore. We are, but we are keeping this model around for backward uh, compatibility only. So don't use that anymore if you can help it. Uh, why? Because this model is so artificial and, and the both in the modeling and also for the even the criteria that we use. Uh, for example, this model limits the phase current. Well, actually nothing limits and on Earth does that. They all limit the sequence current, not the phase current. And, and they don't insert something into so the, the generator. That is just not the way to do it. And so I recommend that you not use them anymore. Okay, so let me uh, preempt uh, your questions by telling you some uh, questions and answers that I get the most often. And this is one that I get a lot. The question is that after adding a voltage control current source for a new solar plant, 
I noticed uh, that the fall currents in the vicinity of the new plant went down instead of up. Am I doing anything wrong? Well, this person is obviously um, thinking of, of uh, his or her experience with synchronous machines. When you put in a new synchronous machines, a, a machine, you know, usually notice the fall current would go up in the uh, buses that are near the new plant and not down. So the answer is no, but th and this is a very common occurrence. And actually the first time I encountered this kind of question myself was when I was modeling uh, the converter for the two utilities that they were contemplating uh, buying a VSC converter from ABB. And so after I noticed this, this fact, I called up my, the ABB engineer in Austria. I said, well, what, what's the problem here? I model the thing you, the way that you told me, and, and I end up with lower current instead of higher current. And he told me not to worry. He said, this thing's happened all the time. And he told me the reasons. And I confirmed them, and I have some, I'm kind of putting them in, in my a way of presenting it to you in the next page. Okay, reasons why convert both CCS and converter resource will actually lower your fall current and not increasing them. Well, in both cases, they are ideal current sources with infinite internal impedance. Well, that is the definition of an ideal current source. Well, as a result, when you put in a new device, you, you introduce no effect on the Theranen impedance at any of the neighboring buses whatsoever. In fact, you haven't changed the whole network's Theranen impedance. And, and that is a big deal because when you put in a synchronous machine, you will change the Theranen impedance big time. So the, and the second reason is that the current injected by a voltage control current source or the new model for current interface resource is on the order of only like 1 to 1.5 times the follow current. Okay, a, con a conventional uh, synchronous machine, when it's faulted near it, you could get in the subtrans and up to 10 or 15 times uh, the default follow current. And the third reason is the current injected by the, these new devices are all reactive when the terminal voltage drops to 0.5 or lower. In other words, this your device is acting like a statcom. <laughs> so it, get, it gives you VARs. So not only you will get lower uh, fault current, you actually will, will find that the voltage, the, the post fault voltage in your simulation is higher. Uh, so, <laughs> so I've done away with the one that people most ask me about, but Here's also a good one that uh, that people who are eval evaluating the 15 in the beta version. So how do I know in version 15 whether these uh, devices have converged? Well, you can find this out by looking at the TTY window after you simulate a fault. It will, it will give you a list of the device that did not converge. Okay, another uh, questions and answer. What are the common causes of convergence problems for converter interface devices? And, and notice that on the very bottom of this slide, I note that convergence problems with type 3 wind plants are very rare. In fact, I haven't heard one person that complained to me about it yet. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good thing. Okay, so, so the answer to the question of why, what are the convergence problems with converter interface devices like uh, uh, wind, uh, type 4 wind plant or solar plant or batteries, okay? Here are the most common reasons. Uh, the most common reason is that people just, when they simulate this thing, they just throw a transformer in front of the, uh, the device and not pay too much attention to the MVA rating of the device. And this is accounts for more than half of the problems that I found you know, so please do pay attention <laughs> to the to the to the transfer transformer rating that's in front of a, a battery or in front of a 
type four wind plant or solar plant, please. Another uh, couple of reasons of why the, uh, these things don't converge. Okay, many people have multiple of devices and they're connected to each other through switches, oh God forbid, and very low impedance lines. This is really bad because this causes the change in one unit will affect the other one and, and, they, and they kind of dance back and forth and they will never converge. And you can avoid this kind of problem by simple, simply aggregating the devices, which, which is what I suggested earlier. Another reason that they don't converge is that people connect one of these uh, converter interface resources to the network without a Y delta transformer or Y Y delta transformer. You know, they just slap together a network and they just put one of these things on it. And no, you can't do that. You got to have a transformer, at least one, and sometimes two, if you want to model both the unit, I mean, quote unit and quote transformer, as well as the one that, the transformer that ties it to the network. And to make sure a Y winding is on the side of the converter interface resource. Okay, I say that again, make sure a Y winding is on that side of, the, of a solar plan of type four wind plan or battery. Why, why winding? Well, most of you who have worked with a synchronous machine for years know that people normally put a delta winding in front of a machine. And the reason for that is to block the third harmonics from going from the machine into the network. Um, the converter interface resource doesn't have any harmonics problem of that kind. Uh, if they do have one, but I already mentioned a way that you can filter out the, the first and second harmonics with, with a capacitor to ground. So, so make sure, very sure that you have a Y winding on. on. Now this one is it, actually posed to me by a couple of very thoughtful uh, users. Uh, they asked me, since there are no loads in the network model, in, we don't model loads in North America, uh, unlike uh, some countries in the world. Well, what if we have hundreds of these solar and wind machines in the network and in pre-fall, where are all these currents going to? <laughs> so. So you, you could end up with hundreds or thousands of megawatts in your network if you happen to be in one of the states that have a lot of uh, these devices. And you say, well, before the fall happens, where are all these things going to? Well, the best answer I can come up with is, is the following. The currents are going to the ground through any positive sequence loss or shunts. Well, if you don't have any positive sequence loss or shunts, they will go through the synchronous machine's internal impedance. And and obviously, this is a phenomenon that's, that's distorting the solution of the program. And, and I thought about this for a very long time. I stood over this for probably months. And only very, within the last couple of weeks, I came to this conclusion. And, and, and I came to this conclusion uh, reluctantly. And I suggest that you set the unit megawatt generation to zero for solar and wind type four wind models. Okay, set the unit megawatt generation to zero. Or in the case where you have a solar generator and a battery system, for example, uh, you can achieve the same result by making the battery absorb the, consume the power that's generated by the solar plant. So basically, the no power is going into the network. So you thus avoid this, this question. And we have, I have tried this on a couple of cases where it was very difficult to converge. And, and, it, and it has beneficial effects. And, and, and I, I'm pretty uh, sure this is the right approach. Why? Because this method of starting with a generation, megawatt generation of zero, is consistent with the way conventional synchronous machines are modeled in a short circuit program, right? 
if you take the synchronous machine and look at its preformed state, well, it's not outputting anything because it has a voltage source behind the impedance and, and that source behind the generator is at one per unit. So, so if your uh, voltage at the bus is about one per unit, well, no flow is going to go, right? And you're only looking for uh, the program, the short circuit program, to tell you how much current that's injected into the pro into the network because the, your short circuit has lowered the voltage in the network. Okay, so if you apply the same logic that I just mentioned to a wind or solar plant, well, then you ought to also make those device output zero current in the um, in the in the pre-fall condition. Now your your question then you probably your question is that, well will it still generate the same current? No, it will not generate the same current, but it will generate substantial amount of current that you saw before with with the megawatt generation in pre-fall. And the new answer is probably the right one. And so uh, so you haven't tried this before, uh, try it. And I, f I hope that you will come to this conclusion because I, I don't have very many supporters yet. <laughs> so if you think that I'm on the right track, uh, let me know. Okay, now suppose that you must model the preferred currents of wind and solar generator. The right way to do it is to add some loads in your network and use the start from power flow solution preferred voltage option. This uh, problem with this approach is that you're going to need the license for the Aspen power flow program, and you have to deal with the issue of power flow convergence. And um, I think in one case, it, I mean, it causes money. In other words, it causes money, and now it causes trouble. And I don't think many relay engineer is, is going to uh, like this this idea, but I I laid it out because in in some countries uh, we have users in about sixty three countries. Um, this is a standard way they uh, they start a short circuit program. So, but in the North America, I don't think that uh, this method is going to fly. Okay, well, uh, this is the end of my talk. So. I hope you get something out of this presentation.